Hello, Active Sage Channel and Sage Channel, and today I'm here to show you guys a little bit of behind the scenes nonsense from season two of our joint survival series. Uh, this is actually focusing on that in crashed Inic ship that we had. We had a little scripted episode where we found Aaron's, um, what was his name? Henry Mark II, the gigantic floating Henry that he had uh, lost. Well, I say he, Tazu had actually lost it. So here is where it ended up crashing. We basically in the previous episode to the one where we found it here. What had happened is Tazu, while Aaron had accidentally alt tab and crashed his game, and so he was in the process of restarting his game, Tazu was, had decided to go ahead and take Henry Mark II for a little bit of a spin, and in doing so, caused an issue. You see, he didn't just want to send it in a spin, he wanted to send it in an autopiloted loop around our asteroid, so it looked like our area was more alive. And in doing so, turning on a few of the thrusters and a gyroscope to turn. He didn't do it quite right. And also, of course, this ship had a gyroscope on the end of it, which, or not a gyroscope, pardon, a rotor on the end of it with that big door, so it glitched out. And when it glitched out, it glitched out bad and set it spurging off, and because it hadn't set the thrusters exactly right, it meant it just kept accelerating in a singular direction. Of course, if you've watched that episode, you would have seen the complete and utter nonsense that happened there of us trying to chase it. Some people actually said like, oh, this whole episode is scripted. No, no, it wasn't. Aaron really was alt, or it really was out of the game at that moment. Tazu really did cause that ship to fly off. And basically the gist of it is we chased after it for half an hour. I was willing to keep on chasing it, but they sort of said, wait, the perfect chance to get this ship back would be to go ahead and just make a scripted episode and then we can have something interesting and entertaining as well. So I was like, oh, okay, why not? So our basic idea was the Inic or the Henry Mark II ends up crashing into an Inic ship or something of that sort and we end up finding it here and then we get attacked by suicide drones. That was the original idea. So on the day of filming, I show up and we had all assigned our roles. I said, okay, I'll make an Inic ship. I'll take your ship and find it and place it here and all that, which actually was a whole lot of work because every time I loaded up the world, Henry Mark II was still flying away. And I even loaded in creative and I was trying to chase after, but it was flying off so fast I could barely catch it. And every time I paste it in, it would start flying off again. So I'm like, okay, I'll put us insert, I'll paste it here and I'll then set it back to, I'll save and exit real quick and set the game mode back to survival because the engines had run out of fuel. So I did that and it was still already, by the time I managed to save and exit, it already started moving to speed, but eventually I managed to actually do that successfully, get into the ship and actually shut down all the thrusters, save it and reload it in creative again, and then grab the ship and actually move it to here. And I believe I even tweaked the engines down a bit because obviously these are broken. Either that or the devs have actually changed how many supplies it takes to get these engines to run, and so they no longer run because of that. Either way, we finally got the ship pasted here, but before that I did that, I had to go ahead and build this Inic ship right here, and I actually have a complete version of that Inic ship, so I can go ahead and load that up. There we go, there it is. And it's basically just an Inic transport ship, and our original idea is that we were going to be recording this episode all in survival. So I had to actually make a functional random Inic ship and we needed guns on it. So I stuck a bunch of guns at the top. I figured why bother with piping up the bottom if that's just gonna be crashed into an asteroid. Let's just make it a functional ship that can move in every direction, but will actually eventually just be crashed and sitting here. And I even had little doors in here that we eventually go through. So it's a pretty simple ship. Our original plan was actually, or my original plan was that we'd be sitting up here controlling it. And I just had a few seats back here. I think we ended up, I can't remember where we sat, but we ended up sitting in different spots. And also, if you look, this ship is actually all piped up. So this is the fully functional version of this ship. It's got its pipes, a lot of redundancy piping. These pipes here at the top actually go all the way out to here and go to all the turrets. I believe I even had ammo in this. Let me go ahead and pop into my camera and fly up there. I see my camera, my character, and fly up there. You can see, it's a nice ship. I actually like it a little bit. It's a very simplistic ship. It sort of looks like a boat, almost like a steam engine where you'd have this big spinny thing at the back just pushing the ship along. I spin that way, actually. But whatever, point is, it was a survival-ready ship, and if I fly inside and give you guys a quick tour of the non-broken version, we got our gravity generator, all this stuff you've already seen before. And then I think if we fly in here, 
Uh, where was an access port? Was it here? Yeah. So you can see everything's piped up, even down here where we have more storage. And if I actually look in these containers, you can see we had ammo. We were originally thinking we might use missile turrets. We eventually decided against it. But I put the ammo in there just in case we decided to swap them out last minute. We got our NATO rounds, tons and tons of ammo and stuff that I sort of scattered into all these panels to make it look like the ship was actually lived in if we ended up saving it and then taking control over it or anything like that. And also that way the turrets would actually function during our fight. Well, come the day of recording, we show up, and the suicide drones I was expecting, first off, well, Aaron had gone and built those, and he hadn't built suicide drones. Apparently, he just thought I said drones. Maybe I did. Maybe I misspoke. Either way, we ended up with the little sat drones, and our friend, I believe it was, who was it? It was either Scott or Nick who was controlling these. Pretty cool thing. He was actually hidden, I believe he was hidden right around here. If we look closely, you'll find... I can't see it here. Maybe he was over on the other side. Point is, he was hidden around the other side. We disabled names, that way he could hide properly. I think he was hidden over here under this arch thing here. When we first flew over, he was like standing completely out of sight. And then he basically did control V and posted it, pasted in a drone, took control over it, flew it over the ar arch or edge right here and began attacking us. Pretty cool thing. It worked out pretty well. I, my original suicide drone idea was basically what I did in that one video where I had that drone with the sensors that would detect stuff. And my idea behind that was he could easily be pasting them in and they would see us and fly towards us. But with a range of 50 meters, it's probably best that, that Aaron ended up building just a combat drone anyway, because those probably wouldn't have worked too well, those suicide drones. Either way, we had our nice battle. It was a pretty cool thing. And the original plan was also that we were going to stop fighting at some point. The drones would just be defeated and fly away. Well, the thing is, the drones just kept coming. He kept pasting them in, so we basically we ran with it. That original us running away and being chased by drones, that wasn't scripted. So we basically, after a while, we just said, uh-oh, we better actually run. They're not stopping. So we hopped in the ship and started flying away. Also, I should note that how did I get this stunk, stunk? No, sunk into the asteroid? Well, first off, I pasted in this ship the Inic craft, and then I pasted in Aaron's ship after doing a little bit of cutting to this ship to make sure they work together, and a little bit of cutting to Aaron's ship to make sure the turrets fit together. And then from there, I went ahead and got out my trusty welder, or not welder, grinder, and started cutting away and blasting away at different little parts of the ship. I think I used a few explosives, pasting them in at a distance and setting them off just to do some blast damage, and then went back in and repaired little parts of it. So if we actually go through this crashed Inic ship, compared to the repaired one, or the original functional one, you can see that there's some pipes in here that are now broken and other things like that. So it was pretty cool. I was pretty happy with all that, and of course this right here, the gap I just flew through, is actually originally full of stone to make it look like it sort of crashed into there. It was a pretty cool thing, and this is before voxel sculpting too, so when I was going ahead and actually mining out this asteroid, because the way I put it into an asteroid is I did the shift F10 method and just spawned in an asteroid, which, there we go, like that, I basically just spawned in an asteroid and placed it within the, within the ship, and of course the ship is actually a station, so it allowed me to do that. And then I just basically got out the drill and drilled my way through here because, as I just said, there was no voxel sculpting back then. Pretty cool stuff, though. I'm actually very happy with how this whole episode came out. Miscommunications and all, it turned out to be a very unique episode, and the scripted parts became very unscripted very quickly as the drones kept coming. Anyway, guys, I think that's it. I'm babbling on a little bit. It was, you know, to explain it, it seems simple, but it took a long time. It took some using of, um... World edit, uh, that one little program has now slipped my mind that used to edit world saved files. I use that as well to just go ahead and actually be turning on and off the thrusters of this ship. I think that's probably how I originally stopped, is I just shut all those thrusters off and then spawned it back. And then when I loaded up the world, they were just off to start out with. It was a pretty cool thing. I was pretty happy with it all. I think that other guys were too. Anyway, guys, that's it for this. After this, we flew back to base, and I'll have another video on what happened back at base when the drones caught up with us, which was another scripted episode, and that turned out to be a lot more intense than planned. A whole lot more. Anyway, guys, thank you a bunch for watching. I hope you found this interesting. Look back at a piece of our past right here. I thought it was pretty cool. I just wanted to share it, especially because I had a finished Inic ship, and there a lot of stuff went into the back of this episode. You know, building the air and built the little drones, and we had people hiding in corners to go ahead and spawn them in and fight us, and yeah. Oh, and I did say that we were going to play it in survival. We did it in creative because this was back when Tazu had bad internet, so he had joined to, we were going to look over things, do a last check on everything. Okay, it's good, and then to restart, but of course with Tazu only having 
a few megabytes or maybe even a gig or two of data that he could use. We were like, no, we can't reload. Actually, he was like, no, we can't reload. I was like, why? Oh, right. Oops. So we just went in creative mode. Anyway, guys, that's it for real this time. Thank you a bunch for watching, and I shall see you guys next time. Ta-ta.